everybody will have a recording after after uh, this meeting as well. So over, Lillian, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Niku. Thank you, everybody, for being here um, and uh, taking part in this webinar. Um, I'm quickly going to share my screen with you so that you can see my presentation. Uh, let me just do that. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Can I just get an indication? Yep. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to um, quickly just run the first thing to be done is to quickly to go through the rules and the guidelines for the webinar. So if possible, please mute your microphones. Um, you can have your video on if, if you want to, but um, the video streaming is always better if you put your video off. off. Um, I will be presenting the bow tie with um, isolytics bow tie today. So please, um, if you have any questions, just write them down. The presentation will be about 45, 50 minutes, but we will give a, a question and answer session afterwards uh, for about 10 minutes. So please make notes of, your, of any questions that you um, might have. Um, and then this uh, webinar will be recorded uh, and it is currently being recorded and it will be made available for everybody that has registered for this webinar. Okay, so our agenda for today looks like this. So we, I am going to talk a little bit about Crest Advisory Africa. I'm going to talk in general a bit about isolytics, the system, and then I'm going to go a little bit more in details, detail with regards to bow tie. The other um, points on the agenda has actually already been um, made available in previous webinars. We did the checklists, the mobile um, uh, Isolytics mobile. The only thing that's more is so much more terrifying than we anticipated, which is a full mobile. Stabbing a guy. He looks like Tom Hanks. Yeah, that's America's so, best sweetheart. Um, somebody's sound is on. Can we please ask people just to um, mute the Apple. microphones, please? I'm your handler. All right, you have to just trust me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so the surveys will be. Um, uh, there will be a webinar on the surveys next week, and then the GRCA was already um, done as well as compliance. All of these webinars are available that has been done. If you, if you have missed it, please let us know, and we can make a, a copy of the, the webinar available to you. Okay, what and who is Crest Advisory Africa? So Crest um, was established by Niku Sneiman, who is the founder and the CEO of Crest um, in, 2000, in June 2014 already. It is a registered uh, company and there's the registration number for everyone that, that wants to know. And then CAA specializes in corporate governance, which includes um, enterprise risk management, business continuity, compliance management, health and safety, um, and many others. Uh, we are also a, a level a BEE level two organization. Um, and we have various offerings that we, that we specialize in, um, starting with training. Um, we do training in ISOs, but also we do soft skill training, um, Societa track accredited training, um, and all of that, advisory services, uh, um, we do audits, we've got products available, for instance, toolkits, especially when we look at um, the ISOs, we have various toolkits available for ISOs, uh, then technology that we have available, uh, for instance, isolytics, um, we also do incubation, um, executive incubation, where we have coaching and business rescue plans and, and um, systems in place. We do various events, um, whether it is breakfast sessions, round tables, or uh, launch events and things like that. And then we also do um, certification. 
we certificate, cert, certif, can certify people, we can certify products as well as organizations um, and all of that. So we have uh, the isolytic system um, and the, for those of you that haven't seen the previous webinars, I'm going to just quickly run you through what isolytics um, in general is and what it is built to do. Um, so it consists out of various components. Um, we're looking at government, government, go governance, risk and compliance, the GRC part of it. Uh, we look at combined assurance. We've got the I square mass, which is incident and investigation management. Then we've got the bow tie on which I'm going to talk a little bit more on today. Um, we look at ERM, we look at um, management systems, we've got a mobile system, we've, we have checklists to do um, analysis on uh, compliance, um, measuring compliance, we do surveys, and then in the background, we have artificial in intelligence running, as well as machine learning, um, that actually enhances the system um, as your um, data within your system is growing, and how it takes that data and uh, makes sure that you have a, a scientific um, outcomes on your analysis and anything that you have put into the system. Okay, so Isolytics is a system that was developed by CAA in partnership with one of the leading um, universities in South Africa um, to assist with the implementation of management systems um, and, uh, and or a combination of management systems. Um, Isolytics measures the health, health and maturity of the management system and drives combined assurance to top management regarding their return on investment. It is the first and only uh, system globally that provides combined assurance, serves as a repository for um, uh, evidence, measures the level of risk, measures the level of assurance, and then in, enables continuous improve, um, auditing um, of risk across various management systems, whether you have one or many others. And this also provides you with a view of where you need to focus your energies um, where it is needed. So the key characteristics of Isolytics is that uh, it provides the ability to interact with a single sign-on for all users interacting with the software. It has the ability to grant role-based permission for escalations and notifications, uh, security and segregation of information um, for different users, uh, ability to store sensitive data in country, and this is specifically looking at GDPR, POPIA, um, and also ISO 27701. And then ab ability to, uh, for reporting and extracting of information manually. So how do you report on a weekly basis, monthly basis, um, on the information that has already been put into the system? We also have API capability to feed other systems as well as obtain information from other systems. In other words, how do we integrate with other systems and use the data or provide data to those systems? Visualization um, through dynamic dashboards um, as per our client's requirements. So we can build the dashboards um, uh, so that you can see what you need to see or what you want to see. Very dynamic, uh, modular approach. So to ensure interconnectivity between all the modules so the system can operate um, you can determine which models uh, modules you would want to add to your system to have optimal uh, production out of it um, we can either put all the modules in or you can then determine which ones will be suit your organization better and then you build your own interconnect connective dynamic isolytic system and software approach. So all of this, again, very customizable, where we from Crest will sit with you and we will um, assist you in building the system so that it works for your organization specifically. So here's just some uh, a view of what the system looks like. You will see on the left-hand side, we've broken down every ISO into ver the various clauses. Um, 
if you know ISOs, you will immediately recognize that clause four usually is the context, um, clause five, leadership, clause six, planning, support, operations, performance, improvements. Um, so those, those are all the clauses within the um, isolytics system, as well as within ISO. And then at the bottom, you will see we have added an integration, integrated system button or tile. So, uh, and I will go into the system just now, just to show you a little bit more about it. But um, there is, it is there where our bow tie, our I-square mass, um, our checklists are live. So isolytics list all the clauses. And if you know ISO, you will know in each clause, there is a quite a few requirements that needs to be adhered to. So all the shells are requirements within those clause and it is identifiable and you have to then measure that. Um, isolytics measures the implementation and the maintenance of your management systems against various matrices, which you can see on the right hand side of the screen. And then out of that, it determines then the level of risk and the level of assurance of your management system. This is just typical um, examples of what dashboards can look like. Um, various reports that you can comply, uh, uh, compile out of the system. Um, so in, in this one, you can look at compliance, you can look at um, your internal control effectiveness environment, um, as well as your document management, you can see what is your risk um, uh, looking like for that specific clause. Um, and then on the right hand side, you will also have an overview of your ISO, um, showing you exact what is, exactly what is your maturity of your ISO, and then also again, where to focus your energies, looking at your level of risk and level of assurance. So if you have more than one ISO that you have implemented, you will notice that you can also have a front screen, like a dashboard, where you can see all the different ISOs that you are busy implementing or that has been implemented, and you can immediately see what the maturity of each one of that is. And that giving um, assurance to top uh, management, also that uh, where you are with your implementation or the maturity of your system. And then we also, if you work through our ISO, um, isolytic system, you will see that we have built this PDCA uh, methodology for, uh, that was created by Deming. We have built it in throughout our whole uh, management um, isolytics. Um, so we are working on a methodology that is very well known and that is proven to work. Okay, so I'm quickly just going to go into isolytics just to give you a feel of what the system looks like and feels like, and then I'm going to go into um, uh, uh, the bow tie. Okay, can everybody see my screen, my isolytics screen? And again, we are on the demo page. Yes. For the isolytics? No, no, on the on the slide. Is it still so it didn't go into that? Okay, let me quickly just stop through. Let me quickly go into. I've put a hyperlink in, and I hope it will pull you through to it. But um, obviously, it didn't. Sorry for no. that. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So, are you uh, while you are doing that? I just want to ask everybody. You will see that um, at the bottom of your of your page, you've got a, a chat area there. If you've got any questions, please log it, log it there. I will monitor it. And then um, after the webinar or after the demonstration, we, we will we'll go over into. Thank you. OK. OK, can everybody see the, the log on screen for Isolytics? Yes. Okay, so you will see username and password. I am logging in. Um, just linking it to a client. Okay, so this is your first screen on the left hand side is all your ISO and your management systems that you can then add on to this screen. At this stage, we only have 18788 here just for demo purposes. So I am going to go into the system. 
Now you will see that screen that I showed you um, in the slideshow on the left hand side, talking to each and every clause. Um, and you will see each clause has been broken down into sub clauses that um, addressed all the shells within that clause and all the requirements. Um, I'll quickly go into uh, one specifically now. Um, and then here at the bottom with our integration, integrated system clause, uh, a tile, you will see there is our, our square mass. Um, we've got the checklists on various levels. Um, we've got surveys and there's the bow tie. So um, that, and any other system that you would want to um, integrate, because we have the API capability, we can then, um, uh, those systems will then lie here to um, easy access them from here and to integrate with them. So if I can just quickly show you, if we go into a system, just to show you just high level um, at what, um, what type of, of measurements we are doing. Um, we will see here at the bottom, this will measure compliance to each and every requirement in that clause. We're looking at um, the in internal control effectiveness um, that you will be measuring. Uh, we're looking at the document assurance that you will be measuring. Um, and then we are looking at your level of risk versus your level of compliance, uh, your le uh, level of assurance. So out of um, the information that is fed into the system with regards to your internal control effectiveness, your uh, document assurance, as well as your compliance, this is automatically calculated by the system. And then it automatically plots it on your um, risk matrix that you have identified that you are using. Then um, looking at non-conformances, um, every non-conformance that has been identified will be plotted against um, this, this um, graph. Um, and then a combined assurance to say uh, where it was what non-conformances identified. And all of these feeds into your level of risk and level of assurance, um, making sure that, that it's all aligned. So this just in short, um, uh, uh, what the isolytic system in general looks like. So I'm quickly going back to my slideshow. Are we back on the slideshow? Can everybody see that? Yep. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm quickly going to go into a little bit more detail with regards to bow tie. So bow tie is the most used risk assessment software globally that is based um, uh, that is based on the bow time method. Um, and here we want to reference ISO 31010, which is actually looking at all the methods and techniques that you are using for risk management. Um, it enables you to easily create a, a bow tie risk diagram. And then bow tie is um, unique in its ability to visualize complex risk in a way that is understandable, yet also allows for detailed risk based improvement plans. Um, to, to be generated. So there's um, eight steps or eight uh, components when creating a bow tie. You first will start with your hazard um, and everybody that has studied a little bit more in risk management, you will know that a hazard is not necessarily a risk, but it is something that has the potential of going wrong. So you will have to identify your, your hazard first. The second part is your top event. Um, and that is where something did go wrong. <laughs> and then out of your top event, you have to identify all your threats or all um, uh, other uh, terminology also used for threats is um, all your possible um, impacts. How does that impact your, your um, event from happening? So all the, everything that can cause the, um, event to happen. The next level is your consequence. What is the consequence after that has happened? To be able to identify all the possible consequences that can come out of that event um, happening. Then you will see you will have barriers or controls um, on the left hand side um, linked to the threats. You will have preventative controls. So what controls can we put in place to prevent the threat from um, creating the event. And then on the, on the right hand side, you will see you have recovery barriers. 
So what controls are there in place to lessen the impact or the consequence or, um, or even um, to, to redirect it or uh, uh, after it have, have happened, what controls are there to manage it? You will see then the next level is an escalation barrier. That is uh, a barrier that actually prevents uh, a normal barrier from happening. Uh, for instance, it can be uh, one of my barriers in a car accident can be that you have to measure your, um, your vehicles, uh, uh, the, the wheels, um, all the wheels needs to have a certain uh, grip on it. The escalation barrier can be that you don't have the correct tools to do that. And then you can put um, actually controls in place to say, do you have the correct tools? Did you procure, procure the correct tools to make sure that you have the tools to um, measure what you need to measure? Okay, so that just tells you all the components of a, a bow tie. Um, so the effectiveness of each barrier can also be measured um, using an internal control effectiveness. Um, you can see here is um, a consequence on that side, a top event here with a, with a hazard, and then there is certain controls in place. If we go into the system just now, I will also show you that each control can be um, categorized, and there's a lot of detail that you can actually put into that control to identify it, whether it's a good control, very good, poor, and all of these are, are things that you can customize um, in line with your terminology that you are using in your organization. Um, here we are looking at the criticality, so each and every control or barrier um, can be rated against the criticality to say how critical is this barrier um, for, uh, to prevent the threat from causing the event. Um, and then on the consequence side, you can, we can also then create um, uh, risk matrices and, and again, it is customizable according to what your risk matrix looks like. And then risk rate, people, um, the environment, assets, uh, reputation, and actually can, you can build up to 16 different matrices that you can actually measure um, all the consequences and understand actually what the risk is involved, if, some, if that would be the consequence. And who does it impact? Does it impact your environment? Does it impact your, your reputation? or people or whatever the case may be and what the impact on, on each of those might be. Okay, and then uh, another aspect of this bow tie, it gives you the ability to do a root cause analysis um, by looking at a, a timeline, uh, incident timeline. So here, here you can then identify exactly um, where the or when the incident occurred, and then actually take it back to understand. Um, here on the left-hand side, you will see we've got various categories there. This is where we put our P square, S T square um, in, in, and P square, S T square standing for processes, people, uh, systems, tools, and technology. So to understand and take this timeline back from where the incident occurred to actually understand where, what went wrong. Was it a system that failed? Was it a tool that was not available at some stage? Um, or whatever the case may be. And then understand where your incident occurred and also what is the uh, repercussions after that? To understand until when did, um, there might be uh, incidents to follow and when is it closed down? So a very nice uh, tool within the Bowtie system that you can actually use. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to um, stop share and I'm going to go into the Bowtie so that um, I can quickly show you a little bit more about the, the physical Bowtie. Let me just start sharing that there again. Okay, and there we are in the bow tie. Okay, so this is a basic bow tie, um, and you will see it looks exactly what I showed you in the, um, the 
uh, presentation just now. I'm going to open a, a test file for us here. Um, just so that we have um, uh, an incident that we can work with. So in this case, you will see the, the hazard is uh, driving a vehicle and um, all of us drive vehicles. So it is not a necessarily a risk to drive a vehicle, but it has the potential of going wrong. So losing control of the vehicle, that is the top event. So now the question will be to ask yourself, what can cause a person to lose control of a vehicle? And all these causes needs to be listed on the left hand side. Um, anything that you can uh, think of. And um, this is very important that um, you can actually combine various uh, methodologies and techniques. So in this case, this is a very nice tool to use um, within a brainstorming session to get people around the table that understand the situation and to brainstorm each and every possible uh, cause that can cause this from happening. Okay, and then on the right hand side, um, to also do the same thing to, to say, if I lose control over a vehicle, what is all the possible consequences that can come out of that? To list as much um, consequences possible um, uh, on the right hand side. The next step will then be to add in your barriers. Okay, so we have on, on this one have done it already. And just by looking at the, the bow tie as it is like that, you can automatically already see that in this case, I have a single point of failure. I only have one control. In these, there I've got five controls and there I've got three controls, which is all right. But so you also know exactly, maybe we should go and look at this and how can we make uh, put more controls in place to ensure that we don't have a single point of failure. Um, I'm quickly, I want to go into the, I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. Um, you will see there, you can, when you actually create your, um, your control or your barrier, um, there is um, how you set it up in the background. So you can actually go and say, what is the category of my barrier? So you can now go and drill down into it. What type of barrier is it? Is it a behavior barrier? Is it a, a passive hardware barrier? And you can, these things can all be set up, customized for your organization. What is the effectiveness of the barrier? Is it good? Is it poor? Is it very poor or very good? Determining, uh, the, depending on the terminology your organization uses. Who is accountable for the um, for this specific barrier? So you can make people accountable for specific barriers or controls. Um, what is the criticality of it? Um, sorry, I'm, I'm at, at, sorry, the bar one. What is the criticality? Is it high, low, medium? And depending on what your word is, you can now measure that. Um, and, and there's a lot of things. I'm not going to go into all the detail because I will keep you here for three days. <laughs> so you can apply it, cancel. Okay, so going out of it. Um, now you can also see if we look at our mode to be able um, to, I quickly want to show you, after you have now set up all your barriers, you can now go and look at what is the criticality of your barriers. And you will see that all the highly critical barriers are colored in one color and the lower critical is. So with one view of this whole thing, you know exactly where is your, your critical barriers and where is your less critical barriers. Um, Niku, I think maybe if you want to come in here, we can quickly go through this, all of that. No problem, Lillian. Thank you. I'm going to, to put you on mute just to make sure that we don't have a, um, an, an echo there. So if, you, if you're looking at, at um, the next one, the, the, BRF, the BRF code, that is your barrier um, code that you've got. So all your, all your barriers that you've, that you've got there um, is having a code that, that you can also look at your coding there. We can also look at the, account, the accountable person. Just click the familiar. The accountable person who is accountable for that specific control. 
that you don't have a um, a control that that is not being being allocated to some someone and no one is actually actually do it the effectiveness effectiveness management Ilian has shown that to you in the detail um, in um, the detail of each of these controls so the effectiveness matrix you've got it here so 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 you can see with one one view what is poor what is good what is what is very good and then if you go to your barrier type barrier type is actually what Ilian has spoken about um, we have got a formula that we are working working with to identify the management the management controls um, and and to actually work with a systematic process on that and we call that p square is t square so um, as Ilian has has mentioned it is to do with the people pro the people the process the system the tools and the technology so p square is t square is for us a a very good um, indication and if you're looking looking at at um, the blue and the pink etc you will see behavior is people um, behavior behavior is people um, if you're looking at uh, the sts that is to do with technical it is either tool or technology so um, you you've got um, a good understanding then where are your failures and what is happening there so if we if we go out of this helium just go go for us to the filters so on on the filters part you can also audit each of these controls so each of these controls are actually measured in terms of how effective is it what is what is what is your rating about it and you can see anything that you want to want to see with one look at it so it is it is actually a, a very advanced model that we are talking about here to do actually um, um, a risk assessment and to understand your your risk assessments now if you're looking at iso 31010 it is speaking about different i think there's there, there's about over 200 um different um risk assessment techniques that that you can address and and bow tie and so, sorry Ilian just close for us uh the audit filter so if you're looking um if you're looking at and just make it for us 75 percent um, there on top left so if you look at that you will see that um make it 50. i want to see everything on the one screen so you will you will see the that as Elena has has spoken about the various methodologies that we are using in risk assessment. Firstly, we are using the um, the brainstorming um, methodology. Secondly, uh, you you are using LOPA, L O P A. So LOPA has to do with layers of protection approach. So those layers of protection you can see in in the first the first um, uh, list of barriers uh, to do with the first course um, has has got four barriers now each one of those has got a percentage so 25 percent if one fails you you you've still got 75 percent left in it um, to actually assist you from from losing control over the vehicle if you go to um, the slippery roads and conditions you you've got the six barriers so that is about 17 18 percent that you are dependent on one barrier um, so if, so so that one if one fails you have still got 85 percent around the uh that can safeguard you of losing control over the vehicle but if you if you go into business continuity the 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 single most important thing that anybody will tell you uh in in business continuity is that you never sit with a single point of failure the single point of failure um, is SPF um, is a thing that you that you have to avoid at all cost. You have to build controls and you have to make sure that your single point of failures, whether it is on your causes side, on the blue side, or on the consequences side, on your red side, that you don't sit with a single point of failure. Because if you if you look at um, uh, Ilian, just go and click on the two there on top. I just want to have two two labels that I can see. 
the one, two, three, four. That, just click on the two. Thank you. That you will see that um, an intoxicating driver losing control over a vehicle hitting a, a pedestrian. Now, if you if you look at a blowout tire losing control over a vehicle and crashing into another vehicle, that is actually the cause and the consequence process. Now, if you if you um, just go to just click on three, now you've got losing control over the vehicle as your top event or your biggest risk. And now you're sitting here on the, um, the right-hand side with your consequence side, you are sitting with, with single point of failures there as well. You've got the top two has got three, three levels of protection approach, but the, the three bottom ones has got single point of failures. And your, um, your control effectiveness there is going to be very dependent on the left left hand side so if a driver loses control um, loss of of attention and lose control and crash into 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 deep water the fourth one from the top you will see that the competence in the confined space rescue is very important if and if if that is late you are dead and that is as simple as that now each one of these consequences has got a matrix um, Elian, just, just over there for us on the first one. Click on the first one on the left-hand side. First one, left-hand side. First one on the left-hand side, Elian. Not on your right-hand side. No, I, Elian, the matrix. Go to the matrix and click on that's it. Thank you. So this this is addressing your, your people risks, and you can you you can go and quantify that um, as you want. Just click for us there on D three, Elian. Delta three, all right, and okay. Okay, and you will see that. That, that is changing. The second one, um, go to second one, please. That is, so the first one was people. The second one is assets. Close it, cancel it. The third one has to do with environment. And the fourth one, cancel that. And the fourth one has to do with your reputation. Now we've got, in this system, we've got space for 16 different assessments. So those 16, assessments is actually making that that you are applying your your mind around this whole this whole process um and okay so so this is the bow tie Gillian, will you go for us over into the timeline analysis please or or sorry the instant manager yes okay so if we look at the instant manager, you will see here, um, there's a little bit of a summary of some of the files that has already been done in um, this um, test file. Um, and you get various, can get various type of, of reports here and analysis. Um, if you will look at this one, uh, if they're talking here about fire in a generator room, you will see there's a timeline, there's a tripod, pod, there's a BFA. So I'm quickly just going to look into the timeline there. And here you will see, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that it fits. Can everybody see this? Um, so here you will see the accident um, or the incident took place on the 18th of January, but they're actually pulling it back to the um, 22nd of December um, at 10 o'clock already to say, where did something go wrong with technology? Where did something go wrong with, with um, the organization? What, what went wrong there uh, with people? Um, and all of these could have led to the incident. So, and if, so it, it, it could have led to the incident happening um, on the 18th of January. And then they take it again further than that to say, uh, where was it escalate, evalu, um, eva, uh, evolution of the incident? Then they're looking at the escalations. They're looking at the detection. Where uh, was it only detected? And then um, going in after the incident. So you can now do a, 
whole um, analysis of your whole incident and understand what really caused the incident from occurring. Could it be prevented maybe already six months before the time? And what went wrong six months before the time, um, for argument's sake? Um, and then also going forward to understand um, how can we prevent this type of incident from occurring again? So that will be that. Um, uh, I quickly want to just go back here. So if you look at the incident, so we are looking at the whole incident here. Um, under the in analysis part, you will see, okay, so the timeline will be part of the investigation to understand how far do we have to take it back and what really went wrong. Then we've got an analysis that we can do various types of analysis in this case. This is a root cause analysis, um, which looks like this, that you can build within the system as well. Um, there is a BFA, a tripod, um, and I'm not going to go into much detail about all the types of analysis that you can do. Um, they, this is like a, a, a project management uh, or task management um, a, a part where you can actually give certain people uh, uh, tasks with target dates and make sure that they reach those targets. Um, you can also attach a lot of things sound, uh, video, documents, whatever the case may be, can be attached here. And then when we look at the reporting, this is all the types of reports that you can draw on all the components within the bow tie. Um, on the barriers, there's reports that can be drawn and you will see these reports in Excel and in Word as well. There's reports on your, um, your competencies. There's reports on hazards that has been identified. Um, and quite a lot. There's a report on your LOPA, your layers of protection approach. So Nikki, if I miss something else here? I think we are, we are okay there, Ilian. Um, I just want to, want to take, um, just click for us there on, on, the, um, on the analysis. I think they on the analysis, the BFA, BFA diagram is actually 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 the barrier failure analysis this is where you have actually built the controls every control is a barrier so each of these barriers um, are evaluated and then identified is it working what is the effectiveness of it did it actually work to contribute to the solution or not and how strong are your barriers now if you if you look at um i i just want to go back Helene, to to um, let's let's go to the timeline analysis. Okay, um, you will see there on top, just below the timeline analysis, there's there's an X in the middle. Just go and click the for, for Asilian. So you can uh -uh, yeah. right there's an X, the green X. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Excel, yeah. Okay, yeah. so click on it. So it is. All the matrices that is actually running um, to input all the information uh, from your your bow tie. Did you click on it? Yes. Uh, Can't you see it? It doesn't show no. Um, so oh, okay, but it opens in in Excel. It opens in Excel and on the right hand side with with um, the blanks um, the the blank folder there just next to the X. Elian? Yeah. Um, this is where you can import events as well um, into the whole system. So um, close there for us. Cancel. So um, all your reports that Elian has spoken about is actually here on the left hand side um, and under your reporting. So, so there's a lot of reporting that you can do, and this is coming with the system. So, so, so everything, your risk assessment, um, everything that that you've that you've got there, your ha your hazards, your audits, actions, everything is included there. So is that for us? All right. So, um, and then back to you, Elian, for um, the closure. Closing. Yes. 
I can just open this one again. Okay, so there we um, can everybody see my slideshow again? Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, then um, that, was the, that was it for uh, uh, the bow tie. Um, I'm just quickly running through the last slides, the checklist we did yesterday. Um, and again, a very awesome and powerful tool to use. Um, we did the mobile, um, Isolytics mobile um, last week. Um, I Square Mass was also done last week. Um, so please, if you, if you need any of these, um, the information on these modules, please let us know, contact us. Um, just uh, quickly, uh, some of our membership and endorsements, you will see their answer. Um, and then I just wanted to highlight actually here the PECB, the Professional Evaluation Certification Body, um, our board. Um, we are actually platinum partners of them. Um, so very big, uh, uh, partnership with, with the PECB. Um, and then there's just some few uh, testimonials that I'm not going to read through everything. We've got a testimonial from the Chief Risk Officer of the Financial Intelligence Center. Then we've got one from the Head of Compliance and Assurance of De Beers. Um, and then one of our uh, uh, very uh, interesting testimonials is um, from the PECB themselves. Um, so the professional evaluation certification body. Okay, and then a bonus for attending the webinar. Everyone who has registered and attended the webinar shall be given access to the Isolytics system for six weeks from the date of registration. Um, your access code shall be sent to you within the next 48 hours. Um, or you know, 48 hours from the registration. And then please also attend all our other webinars. Um, um, just keep a lookout. We are sending you notifications if and when there is webinars coming up. Um, and then also please apply for any uh, proof of concept um, for your specific environment if there is a need. Um, we will uh, uh, be sending you also these um, webinars that has been recorded. Um, that we are currently recording as well. Um, and there is our contact details from myself and Nico, um, but I'm sure you all have our contact details. Is there any questions from anyone? Ian, um, on the chat, I just want to, want to explain, the, the, there is one question from Della from Ghana. He's asking, the, is, is there um, business, is sorry, is is the Isolytics for business continuity management? Absolutely, um, Della. Um, if you look at the the system itself, what what we've what we've got, I just want to to open there for you. Um, on my system, I'm I'm going to share it for you. On my on my system, then you will see there that I think you can see that, Tillian. Just nod. Mm -hmm. If you can yes. see, it, good. Change the ISO. It's as quick as that, and then you've got the one for, for security, you've got the one for medical devices, environment, compliance, uh, that is um, food safety, business continuity. So if you, if you, that one as well, um, then it will create for you uh, business continuity, and you can see the, that you haven't worked on it as at all. So the moment that you are starting to work on the business continuity, um, module, um, it will actually ask you all the questions um, or all the, the requirements that has been documented in the standard itself and it is the same kind of process that you're following with all the standards. So what we have, what we have identified um, is, is that, is that um, ISO is built on, on certain pillars and those pillars are replicated in in all the ISOs. So um, your, your leadership pillar, what we have actually seen there is, is that there, there are maybe one or two requirements that is just a bit different um, from ISO 31000 that is actually in, in, um, in business continuity. So you can measure, you can actually measure any, any system and we, we are all 
or any framework. Um, and frameworks, I'm speaking here about uh, for auditors, the IPPF. I'm speaking about we, we've got uh, three or four standards extra, 27701, that has to do with um, the, uh, the protection of, of um, private information management system, uh, as well as document management system. Asset management we've got here, we can also bring in um, King 4 or SOX um, as a framework. It is measured in the same methodology. We can even, uh, with, within our compliance space, what we have um, had on the webinar is, is that any service level agreement that you've got, we can even build uh, all, all your requirements that you've got on, on your, your service level agreements um, that, we can, that we can bring it into, into the system. It can lie there and you can, you can see exactly what is the, um, what is the, que the questions and what is the performance that you need to be, be looking at. Niku, here's another question from Michelle Kay. She yes. says here, um, I was wondering if one is able to link and measure KRAs, KRIs in the system. It is the same as uh, the service level agreement. Service level agreement, um, KR, KPAs and, uh, sorry, KRAs, the same as if, if we are looking at, I just want to, want to go into, into this. Th thank you for the, the question, Michelle. Uh, if you go and look at the performance, the performance section, what we have done here under the performance section is that we have built in here strategic objectives or strategic KPAs. So you can, you can go and formulate it. As you can see there, it is at the moment um, for the demo purposes, it is a clean slate system. So in this one, you can, you can, you can go and change um, the strategic objective or your KRA uh, number number one that is going to be doesn't doesn't matter what you can go and change it there and then the same methodology is actually working and um, the system just need to be be refreshed but but then you've got exactly the same met methodology so you can you can you you can see that as well with either on your strategic level your departmental level operational level. And what will be included here as well is your compliance level, um, as well as the the, um, the compliance level and the legal environment. So I think if we go back to strategic level, you will see that I've changed it there. So there's the change and now you can measure it in the same myth methodology that you've got. So the, the system is actually driving objectives. It's actually driving objectives, whether it is a quality object, whether it is it is, it is a, um, um, a security objective, whether it is a safety objective, whether it is, it is an information technology or, or, or information objective. You can also, so any one of, one of these systems are actually ob, ob, objective driven that is supporting the bigger company um, with a management system to make sure that this company is actually complying with the best practice that is out there and that is ISO. Any other questions? Yeah, Nico, another question. Uh, there's a question from Lorinda. She says here, Niku, we spoke of GRC software before Lakira. Uh, would the software be something different? Ah, thank you very much, Lorinda. Uh, Lorinda, she's from the Seychelles, the central bank there. She and Priscilla, you can see uh, on, on the screen there. The GRC system that we've got here, Lorinda is is um, we have actually taken the best practices. Any sorry, any apologies. Any other system that you are buying is coming off the shelf. It has it has it has got the basics, the basic functionality that you have to go and build. What we have done here is that we have actually actually pre-populated 15, 16 standards um, and frameworks. So now you've got a GRC system. A, uh, um, that you can actually measure on every level, whether it is on business continuity, whether it is, um, I know that you are in risk, we can go to the ISO 31000 day, so, so we, can, we can measure that day, um, and you can measure health and safety day, so 
GRC and combined assurance. So we are actually speaking here about GRC and A. So the, um, the governance, risk, compliance, and assurance is actually built in, in here. And um, it is actually, actually giving you this kind of a dashboard that you can see in which environment and which management system are not, are not performing as it should be. And this incorporates the specific objectives that I have shown you um, that you've that you've got there in 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 this in this environment with your performance, and you can have those in every management system that it is actually actually pulling up the the, the information for you to your dashboard that is actually lying there um, with a graphical overview of your specific environment. So this is actually giving you a much more comprehensive, pre-developed and pre-populated system that you don't have to go and um, this is strange that, that this graphical um, overview is not so, it is supposed to be quick. Sorry, there's it. So you can, you, you can see exactly where is your, and we can have this graphically displayed as you want. Um, so this is actually give, giving you the same methodology, the same buy-in, and buy-in in management systems, whether it is ISO 31000, um, whether it is, it is business continuity, the biggest buy-in or the biggest challenge that you are going to have in implementing of any of these systems is firstly buy-in and secondly, um, so, sorry, le leadership commitment, buy-in and change management. Change management is going to be your the most critical um, process. And if you've got these, these things displays, displayed as it is here with your risk, your risk registers that is actually populating and your business, your, um, business impact analysis that is actually uh, being done in a 22301 space, um, it is giving you a, a real-time view of how, what is the system's health. So your GRC, you can measure it now at one place over, we can have 12 systems in your environment, or if you want to have one or two, just as good. I hope that I've answered you. Any, any more questions, Cillian? Nothing on the chat line. Um, Lorinda says, thank you, yes. Okay. So anybody else? I, th I see it's now 1.59. Um, we are keeping within our time limit of two o'clock. So um, please, I want to, uh, we have been approached by the Professional Evaluation Certification Board, uh, the PCB, to place this system on the PCB store um, that, that, you will, that you will be able to, to, to either buy it from there or you can buy it from us. We will have a, um, a special till the end of this year um, that if you buy the basic system, um, this module with, with, with all these, um, uh, these standards in, then for for three standards we will we will have a um, a special for you and we will communicate that to you. We we also want to ask um, for people. Um, we we we've got a network of consultants that, that's working all over the world. Um, within the PCB, we've got about a thousand five hundred with um, consultants, and most of them are trainers, and uh, they they are consulting. In your environment, we, we are going to have a value-added reseller um, demonstration as well um, during next week um, to actually explain what, what is the benefits for consultants um, and how they can actually work with the system to influence and to develop their the specific space in a much better environment. So thank you very much. Thank you for, your, um, for listening to us and, and attending our meeting. So we've got a supply chain um, system um, webinar on Friday at the same time, one o'clock in the afternoon. Enjoy your day, everybody, and be safe. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Thank you.